In this video, we're going to continue our shapes painting, moving on to the cube shape. Now, out of all the shapes, I'll perhaps say this one's the hardest. Um, I want to dive into this one next because um, we have to address uh, certain techniques in drawing, such as perspective, that we might be able to help assist you with making this shape. So, uh, perspective is, you know, the art of drawing things with, you know, uh, that look like they go back in distance, as we see. Um, so there is some techniques by various uh, various artists out there. There's a lot of good books on it. If you uh, want to draw th like buildings and things like that, I really recommend uh, checking on some, um, some tutorials perspective. I won't be going in great de detail into perspective, but I will touch on it a little bit for this. So first thing I want to do, and here's my sphere, is uh, you can see this is the same file from last time. I'm going to go ahead and hide the sphere so it's just out of the way for right now. And again, we can click on this little eyeball right here in our layer section to turn layers on and off. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn this off. That way uh, it's not in the way. So I've created a, a new layer. This is going to be my helping layer. This layer is going to be used for um, me. I'm going to draw some guidelines in and talk about perspective. And then I'm going to come back in and actually make the cube shape later. So what I'm going to employ here is something called three-point perspective. And when you're doing three-point perspective, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to draw out a horizon line. Now, again, um, I'm not going to go into super detail, but generally you, you, you create a, out a horizon line and um, use that to help you uh, draw objects above and below. So I created a line, and to do this, I just made it a different color just for the heck of it. And I set my opacity to 100% because it's just guidelines here. I found a brush size I want. I think it's a little too thick. And I'm just going to click on one part, hold down shift, and draw. This will, this will if I'm holding down shift when, I, when I'm drawing a line, it will force it to be perfectly orthogonal. So if I start drawing up and down, it'll draw up and down. If I start drawing left and right, it'll draw horizontally. And again, you just start with the pen tool, start drawing, and hold down shift, and it'll automatically stay the direction that you originally start moving the mouse or pen, so in this case, horizontal. So at the end of these, and I, this is arbitrary to draw it, and this might be wrong, we're going to have two points. These two points are what we're going to do to determine our angles, but we also need a vertical. Now technically it can be anywhere on this, but um, I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm going to draw roughly right in the middle. Um, so our third point can be at the top or bottom of this line. So we have one point in the left horizon line, one point on the right horizon line. And if you wanted to draw the cube from looking down upon it, it would be, you know, you would draw down here. So you would use this point down here. So maybe I'll put a point down here. Or if we wanted to draw above it, the cube, even if you want to see the bottom of the cube, it would be up here. So I'm just going to go ahead and imagine this as my, um, my, my horizon line. My third point is going to be at the top or bottom, depending on which direction I want to draw this this cube from. So you gotta imagine that this cube is we're we'll looking at on, on on top of it here and that's great. That's the way I, I prefer it for this exercise to be. So I can use this this edge right off the bat as my leading edge. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pick a spot. I'm just gonna say okay the cube's gonna start here. And all you're gonna do is you're going to draw this helper line uh, and, all, and all this time I'm gonna click, hold down shift, and then click again. And what will happen is Photoshop will draw from point to point. You can see I drew a point there. Do the same thing over here. So click right here, hold down shift, then click over here. So this is going to be the bottom edge of a cube. There's a lot extra here. Don't, you know, we're going to go have to go back and erase this, but this is going to be the bottom edge. Now I'm just guessing, but I'm going to say here. I'm going to hold down shift as I draw. That's going to be the side edge. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Hold down Shift as I draw. That's going to be the other edge. Now this is getting kind of um, kind of too tall. I think I'm, I've already misjudged this a bit because if I come up here and draw this, then I wouldn't, you know, from up here I wouldn't see the top edge because the top edge is above the horizon line, so you wouldn't see the top. If you want to see the top edge, you'd have to draw below the horizon line. The thing is, it's not going to look like a cube. It's going to look more rectangular, and that's fine. I mean, like I said, this is kind of free drawing, so I'm going to have to make some changes. So maybe I'll come in here and have the top edge start right about here. So let's for, for example, let's say. So I'm going to click here, and once again, hold down Shift, and then move and click again. So it's just a click, hold down Shift, 
click when you want to draw straight edges. You hold down shift when you want to draw straight lines, horizontally or uh, vertically. So again, click, hold down shift, click. So you can see, yeah, we can see the top of it, but I definitely am quite a bit off. So yeah, that that's normal. So maybe you know what? You know, that's fine. Maybe I'll go ahead and drop this uh, point down a little bit more. So I'm going to hold down shift, draw a little further, put that over there somewhere, and then maybe I'll try this again. So maybe that down here, and then down there, and drop to that here, drop that to here. And yeah, it might get a little confusing, but maybe I'll just go ahead and erase these just for your guys' viewpoint so you can see it a little bit better. And then I could also bring tighten these in too. So this is going to be this, and I do think it is too tight. I think I need to drop this a bit. So you can see, kind of have to practice this. I'm just going to erase these for, you know, they don't have to be perfect. I'm just going to erase them so you can see. So I'm dropping this down a little bit further. Now, I have a little more room. Like I said, I didn't have, an, I didn't create enough room. This will be my back edge. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take this to here and um, this to here. Oops, I'm sorry. Uh, my back edge is going to be determined from the corners here. See, I'm getting myself confused. So I'm going to take this edge and come to here and this edge to come to here. You can see we can erase these lines to get our cube. So we've drawn this cube in perspective. And I'm just going to kind of erase around this to kind of make it clear to, you, to the folks. So there is our cube drawn in perspective. And we're using these lines to get those drawings in place. Now, these um, blue glide, uh, guidelines that I drew here are going to be in my final one. I just wanted to get the perspective down because I know a lot of students have a hard time getting these in perspective. So what I'm going to do is, I am thinking I'm going to erase most of this. I'm just going to use the lasso tool, the L key, draw around because I don't need these guidelines anymore, at least, you know, for what I'm about to do. I'm going to go erase all these guidelines and just kind of move this up. Um, and what I did, again, uh, lasso tool, made a selection, backspace, and that was it. So that's how I got rid of all those guidelines. So now with those guidelines all gone that I'm not going to be using, I'm going to hit the V key, Victor key, move to I'm just going to move this up a little bit so it's just knocked down at the bottom of my screen here. So <clears throat> with that done, it's a little off, and I mean maybe I, I can do this a little bit cleaner. I'm messing up my perspective there, but that's okay. Or I can, I can do it also do this. I think that looks better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the the um, the lasso tool, uh, the polygonal lasso tool, and I'm going to actually break this down into three different layers, uh, mainly because I think it'll be easier to paint um, down the road. Because I'm going to employ the same technique that we did with the sphere, where we did a mask. But last time I just had one mask for the the sphere. I'm going to use three masks for this. Now that's not the only way to paint. You can just hand paint it. But I'm going to go ahead and continue that same technique of using masks, so just to kind of help drive those the, that home, because that's a really powerful tool in Photoshop. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the polygonal lasso tool, which is the same place as the lasso tool. And just remember, there's there's multiple tools under each one of these objects. So if I click on this, I can switch from the regular lasso tool to the polygonal lasso tool. I can also I'm going to, I'm going to unclick away from there. I can also, if you know the quick key, in this case L for lasso, if you do shift L, it'll toggle through the subtools in this case. So shift L to toggle polygonal lasso. So it's always shift in the corresponding tool in the toolbox, whatever key it is, to toggle between the, those, those, those uh, subtools. So again, I switch to this uh, polygonal lasso tool right there. And I'm going to create some new layers here. Control shift N, create a new layer. And I'm going to come in here and just use the polygonal lasso tool. And I, I am, you know, being a little loose with this, but I'm going to go ahead and just kind of click around here and kind of trace my initial guideline drawing. And I'm going to create a shape. So there's one shape. And like I said, I'm going to break this into three different layers. So it doesn't matter what color we put in here. These are, remember, our masks. Last time what we did was just we just painted in some random color. I'll just do like a darkish gray. And I'm going to fill this. And there's one side. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer, Control Shift N. And I'm going to go ahead and once again use the lasso tool. And I'm going to trace this. If you hold down Shift and use the lasso tool, you can also get perfectly um, orthogonal uh, viewpoints, like up and down, such as that. So there's my next shape. And I'm just going to make it a different value of gray. Though this doesn't matter, it's just a mask. It's just so we can see, see it. So again, this is on one layer. I made a new layer. I'm going to fill once again. And there's my second one. So I'm creating this shape with these masks because it'll be easier to paint when we get to the painting process of this. All right. One last one to go. Do the top one now. And I'm going to go ahead and paint this. And it won't be perfect, and that's okay. These masks were just a starting spot. And I'm going to do one last value of gray here. Maybe something a little lighter. And I'll paint. Yeah, go ahead and fill this. So there is my cube now, broken into um, three sides with three masks. Each one has a lasso. And again, this is not the only way. Some people will just straight up just come in here and you know, just start painting, which is totally fine. If that's the route you want to go, you just won't have masks, the advantage of masks. You know, but if you came in here and just kind of started drawing this, you know, that is perfectly fine as well. I mean, you can totally do that. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep going with kind of what we did last time and showcase masks um, to their fullest here. So I have three masks. If you remember from our, our last time, we had the one mask. Uh, for the sphere, but we need we ideally need three here. So there's one for each side. So cubes are quite a bit harder to do than spheres because you have ang you know uh, abrupt angle changes. The sphere is round, so it doesn't have it has angle changes, of course, but they're just kind of rounded, and that's why you get this soft gradient. Cubes tend to throw people off because of the sharp angle changes. Now I did my light up here in the top right area for this the, the sphere, so I'm going to continue to do that for this cube. So what you need to think about here is I'm going to go ahead and put this on a new layer, just you know, just to showcase what I'm drawing here. Is you have to kind of plan where you want your your light source to come from. So if my light is coming from that top right area, it's going to shine down on here, and what's going to do is it's you know I've already kind of already hinted at it that the the, the area that's going to be the lightest overall is going to be the top. This area is going to be the, the lightest. Depending on which direction, I never really specify if it's coming more from the front. This area technically could be the lighter area, but you know it depends on how high or how front, more from the front is. But in this case, I'm going to do it more from the top. This area would be the second, you know, lightest would be you know mid tones, and this would be the darkest. That was a horrible three. So one would be the brightest, two would be the second dark, um, you know, the middle, and three would be the darkest because it's on the shadowed side. Now that's you kind of how you would start. You would you would determine out your base values here, and, and I kind of cheated when I made my my just to save time. I kind of made my grayscales uh, follow this, and my shadow, of course, would be on this side. So I'm gonna have a shadow that comes out this way, but I'll worry about that much later. So you generally block in your 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 basic um, your basic. Uh, values here. What you're going to say is you're going to you're going to be your brightest side, your mid, middle side, and what's the darkest side. And then what you do is you paint um, similar to what you do with the sphere. Is you 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 gradient grade, you add a gradient to it. Now this had a very rounded gradient because it's a sphere. The gradients on these are going to be much more linear. They're just going to be a gradient that just you know just goes along this flat surface. So it's just going to be you know imagine the directionality here. The gradient is going to go this way. So in this case, the gradient is going to go that way. So it's going to be lighter on this side, and, and, and it's slightly darker over here. Same thing with this one. It's going to be lighter on this side, and it's going to be darker over here. But what throws people off is this side, its tones should all be generally lighter than this side. And then when we get to the third side, it's going to have a gradient too. We'll talk about that later. But it's it's going to, its tones are going to all be darker overall than two and one. So let's go ahead and put this into practice. I'm going to select all my helping layer here and make get rid of it. Hopefully, you guys got all that. And I'm just going to do these one at a time. 
So let's just, you know, I'm just going to kind of ball, you know, ballpark this in. So I'm going to use, I'm literally going to go ahead and use gradients to get this going. So on this layer, this is my mask. I could paint on this mask. I don't want to, but I could. Um, you know what? I'll go ahead and show you guys how to do it once on this. I'd recommend putting on a different layer, but I'll show you once how to do it like this. So if you ever want to paint on a layer and you want to be sure that you don't accidentally paint outside that layer, um, you can make a selection. Um, how you make a selection um, is there are a couple different ways. Again, I'm a huge fan of my quick keys, so I don't even know the way through the menus anymore. Is if you hold down control and actually click on the icon, um, the, 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 the picture preview right here. You can't really see much here because it's so small. But if you click on this picture preview here, you're going to select whatever pixels are in that layer. So if I click on this one, for example, you can see it gets the marching ants now of that layer. So now I can't paint outside this shape. So if you wanted to do it this way and just start painting in here, you could. It's just slightly destructive because, you know, you're painting over these pixels, but you're at least preserving the edge. You're not going to mess up the edge of this layer unless you really, you know, unless you deselect it and start painting. So you can keep it clean like that, the edge clean for, for those purposes. Because this is, I'm assuming most of you guys are beginners, I'm going to go ahead and keep this as non-destructive as possible. So I'm not going to do it this way, but if, you, if you're more, more intermediate and you want to preserve on layers and, as you go, this is a perfectly fine way of working. So I'm going to go ahead and control D to deselect this. And I'm going to create a new layer. Just like last time on this new layer, I'm going to make it uh, use a clipping mask of the layer beneath it. So again, this is the layer beneath it. It's the top part of this cube. And here's the layer I just created. There's nothing on it yet. I'll just go ahead and paint on here just to show. So on that layer, that's where I'm going to paint on. And I don't want to accidentally paint outside the clipping area. So again, to do this, you need to make sure this layer is directly above whatever's going to be the, the mask and hold down Alt and click between the two layers. So I hold on Alt and click here. Layer 6 will only show up on layer 4. That's what we're telling it to do. So I'm going to go ahead and hold on Alt and click. And when you see the little arrow indent, that means it is now using the layer beneath it as a clipping mask. And this now, layer 4, can only be, you can only appear on layer 4. If you ever want to break that clipping mask, you hold on Alt and click between the two layers again. You'll break the clipping mask, you'll remove it, and the paint will show up however you had it painted. It'll go on top. So I'm going to go ahead and you can see, uh, without a clipping mask, click um, Alt, click again to create a clipping, clipping mask. So there it is. So I'm going to go ahead and select everything and delete everything on this layer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and... That is pretty bright already. I don't know if I want to go any lighter than this because I'm looking at my, my sphere for reference here. Is I, I'm going to, you know, gradiate this in some way. So I'm going to go ahead and sample maybe th this color over here. I'll start with that. I might have to go darker. And I'm going to make this the lightest color, at least for now. You know, again, you can always push and pull your, your values as you go. That's what the whole exercise is about. I'm going to sample this value over here because it's darker. I'm going to hit the G key for gradient. And my gradient's already set to color and transparency, but just in case, you know, you didn't catch this from the, from the first video, uh, if you click here, uh, you go to basics, uh, they changed this recently, there's little, this, this is foreground, background color, uh, foreground color, transparent, and just pure black and white, no matter what colors your colors are, so it's the middle one. So if you click on that, it is now set to foreground, whatever your foreground color is, and to transparent. So it ignores the background color. So mine's, my foreground color is darker gray. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use the gradient tool. And remember from before, you click the gradient tool and, and I'm clicking and holding and I'm dragging the gradient. So I'm, dra I'm gonna drag roughly the directionality that I want my, my, my thing to go. And this will layer. If you keep doing them, they'll keep layering on top of each other. So something like that is a good start. I mean, I'm just going to go ahead and go with that for right now. Um, that's going to be my my overall gradient. I think I'm a little more angled, like the, uh, you know, going horizontally, but this is fine. I'm going to come. I think I'm going to come and hand paint the rest later. But I'm going to go ahead and do the base gradients with the gradient tool. All right. So I need to create. Unfortunately, the one downside of this technique is I do. Uh, it is layer intensive at, at the beginning. So I'm going to have to create a, a new layer. For each one of these these paintings, I'm going to do because I have a, three masks. I need three paintings, 
So I'm going to create another layer for this. This, so this is my side one. Create a new layer. Once again, I'm going to mask, um, use a clipping mask. So that layer is above this one. So I'm going to alt click. And I'm going to go ahead and repeat the process. Again, the light side's coming over here. This is the darker side. I'm just going to go ahead and just to push, keep going with this, this idea, I'm going to sample this color. And I'm going to do my gradient this way. So you can see it's going to be overall now darker. Now there is actually one other thing I need to take in consideration here. I don't want to get to it just yet, so I'll come back to it. But for right now, this is good. And I'm gonna I'm gonna hit it right now, but I'm just gonna do it on the third side first. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat. First, I need to make my layer here. Create a new layer. This again is the back side of it. I'll hold on Alt with my new create a layer and do this. Now I can't sample a, a darker color, obviously, but what I can do obviously is, is just use my click on my swatch here or go to my colors if you have it open um, and, and darken this. I do recommend that you get your color palette open. Uh, it is the um, under window, it's the F6 key. Uh, this is great because it uses hue, saturation, and value or brightness um, sliders for all your all your, your color painting here. This is a great way of working. Uh, we don't need to go into hue and saturation, which is hue's color, saturation is how saturated it is, how much chroma it has. We're doing value painting, so we're just concerned with the brightness, but you can just literally drag the slider at, back and forth. Um, and you can do this if you click on it with the hue cube as well. It's just I find it easier to do it with the color sliders, so it's, it's really easy to do this. So you can just darken this a little bit by dragging the B in this case and dragging it over. So I darkened my color a bit. And now, now we can address this gradient. So I'm going to do another gradient here, but what people tend to do is they tend to get this one wrong. Because I've been always talking about how the light source is over here, the light source is over here, so you're always drawing here to here. And what most people will do is they'll come over here and draw from down here. This, and this is a very common mistake. Um, unfortunately, this would be wrong. Um, and the reason is, if you guys remember back to, I'm going to do that, if you guys remember back to when we talked about on our sphere, how we talked about the light side uh, transitioning tonal shadows and then get you get to your core shadow and then we talked about our reflected light so what we need is we need to kind of think of the same idea remember this is receiving light because the light will literally bounce off the ground and come back and hit this bottom part of the sphere the same is true for the cube so technically the darkest part of this cube is going to be along the top edge over here. So I actually need the gradient to be more like this. This is going to be the darkest edge because the light's going to pass over it. Let me create a new layer just to showcase this. The light's going to pass over it. A nice bright yellow color, why not? The light's going to pass over it. It's going to, not going to hit under this edge, but then it's going to bounce off the ground back up and it's going to hit the under parts of this cube. So technically it's going to be darker across the top then it's going to be across the bottom. So that's the common thing. That's what I skipped over here. I, like I said, I, I, I skipped something over here. It's like it's going to be darker on this side, but technically it should be darker along this edge too. But I'm just going to use the brush for that part um, to get to that part. So we want it to be a little bit darker across the top. So this has basically two gradients. It has a gradient going this way and a gradient going this way. All right. So let's go ahead. Where was I? So we have this one. This one's actually relatively easy. I'm going to actually work now backwards to forwards, I think, to find my values. And you know what? Because I have this sphere over here, I'm just going to sample this. I'll go ahead and keep it consistent. And I'm just going to go ahead and use a big, 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 big brush. I'm going back to my painted layer my mat on my back image here. So yeah, a lot of layers right now. I'm going to soften, my, i.e. feather my brush by using shift left bracket. Turn down my opacity using number keys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with 2 for 20%. So, Then I'm just going to go ahead and start painting this and see what I get. A little bit darker. Maybe I'll sample the color down here. Maybe I'll lighten this up down here. So you can see I can paint this. It, doesn't, it ain't going to be much because remember, overall this side, its light side will still be darker than this side and, and this side. So yes, it is lighter down here, but it will not be li lighter than anything on this side, really, or especially not the top. So just because this is lighter, this value should still be darker than what's ever up here.
All right. So I'm going to kind of jump through these. Kind of pick these same things that go. And this one, once again, I'm going to make my brush really big. I think 20% might even be too much. I like to build up slowly myself because, like I said, I'm heavy handed. So I tend to build up very slow. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. And you don't have to do um, the same values as your other things. I do recommend that you, if you're doing these all exercises in one on one page that you keep all the values roughly the same because it looks better. Um, but you maybe I might have to come back in and kind of tweak things because I think like now this doesn't look dark enough for me personally. So maybe I'll uh, maybe even I'll try going to black. And I should go back to the back edge first. And I have to do really low percentage. This might backfire, but that's great. That's you guys can see that backfiring. And again, we're gonna want this to be darker. There we go. It's a little bit better, I think. Kind of like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and move up. Uh, I.e. move up, I mean, is I'm going to go back to the other value side here, the, the side. And technically, I'm getting too dark down here because the same rule should apply to, you know, to the this. So I'm lightening this up a little bit. I'm going to lighten this up a little bit more on this side. I think I'm getting too dark. And now I'm going to move up to the top one. And I'm going to darken this a little bit because I think it's too light up here. It's too far of a transition. It's too much. So I need to unify all these colors a little bit more. They're just too, they're too far apart right now. So I'm kind of coming in here and getting these all, moving, pushing these all around, jumping from my three layers that are on top of my clipping mask. And just kind of getting these all oops, I'm on the wrong layer. That happens a lot. You can lock them. I don't do that too often though. It's probably a bad idea. Not too, but that's okay. I'm kind of getting these a little all a little closer. Now my thing's not perfect cube, that's fine. And what I would do is at some point I would actually do a whole um, whole layer that I paint over on these just because I don't like this to be so CG. Um, and that's just me. So I would come in here and I like to also like to do beveled edges. So what I would usually do is come over here on a layer that has no clipping mask and kind of just paint on top of it. So maybe I might pick this color for example and kind of let me turn my opacity way up. I'm gonna start at 100 though. I know I'll knock it back down. Ooh, well, too feathered. Let me rough it up a bit. Or sorry, harden up the edge a bit. It's also too way too dark. So that too way too much. Let's go 50%. I was at 10. So maybe I'll come in here and I'm just going to sample the colors around here. I'm trying to find that nice. Oh, you know what? I don't think I have my, because I'm using a pen tablet, I don't think I have my transfer settings on. So the F5 key, if you ha have the luxury of having a, uh, a, a pen tablet, I'm going to turn on my shape dynamics, which allows the brush to be uh, shaped, and my transfer, which allows me to control the opacity with the brush. So yeah, I'm going to sample these colors as I go. I'm just going to kind of get this edge to be not so crisp. I should delete that. I'll, I'll clean that up later. Now I'm just kind of messing with percentage, kind of softening this up. I just want to kind of soften this edge up. So I'm kind of, again, Blurring this. Backside needs the same thing. I'm sampling the color along the top. I'm just kind of running the pen over this. You can do this with a mouse too. It's you know, I, I don't won't lie, it would be harder, but you can do it with a mouse. Uh, I can actually turn up my opacity a bit. I tend to when I tend to do that though, I tend to be heavy handed again. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw a pen over that, just kind of softening that edge up so it's not so um, CG crisp looking. Uh, technically, it's not realistic, but I tend to to lighten these edges up so it's obvious. Some people even do black lines. That's fine if that's what you want to do. Just make sure that you keep your style consistent. Whatever you do. There you go. So I'm just painting. I'm painting on a brand new layer that's completely on top of everything. The great thing is if you don't like what you're doing, 
because it's on its own layer, you can come in and erase parts of it too. And you can even use the eraser at like opacity. So I'm going to maybe turn my eraser to 20%. And because I don't like what I did right here, tone this back some. So you can see, kind of getting something like that. So there is my, my cube. Um, the only thing last I need on this, at least uh, all I'm going to do because, you know, I want to progress this lecture along, is I need a shadow. Um, we could do the same idea where we created a cube, uh, the sphere, we squashed it. Um, I'm just going to straight up lasso this um, and, and then be on a different layer. So I'm going to create a new layer. Yeah, there's a lot of layers. We will simplify it down in a little bit. I'm going to create a new layer and make sure it's at the bottom. I'm just going to click and drag it down to the bottom. I'm just going to use a lasso. I'm just going to go straight to my polygonal lasso. Um, if we, the lights come from here, uh, I do have a kind of more oblong cube here, but that's okay. Maybe I'll just kind of come in here. Maybe I'll even put it a little bit from this side. Oops, I didn't mean to click there. And then I'm going to do this kind of thing. So, and the great thing is if you put this layer at the bottom, last time we, we made a shape and we blurred it, I'm just going to straight up paint this this time. I'm just gonna. I drew that lasso out there. Make a really big brush. I'm hitting the brackets and then using shift bracket to make it feathered. I'm gonna. Ah, for start at forty percent. I'm gonna go ahead and go black, though that might be too dark. And then just kind of paint this on this side. And again, just like we talked about last time, is the shadow is going to be sharp, generally, and darkest right around the base of the object. A lot of people tend to make the shadows too big. They tend to go way out here, for example. It tends to be really only truly darker right around the, the, the shape. And then it fades pretty quickly. In fact, even like this looks fine. I mean, it's probably going to be too CG, but this is already too big in my opinion. Maybe I'll use the eraser. Again, big eraser. Erasers work just like brushes. So again, brackets and shift brackets to make it bigger. Uh, or mess with the 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 edge of the br the brush. Opacity the same thing. Maybe I'll turn it down to twenty percent, and I'll tone this back. So I'm not actually blurring a shape this time. I'm actually using the brushes on a lasso selection that I have. I'm gonna tone down my opacity a little bit, something like that. Now, if the seeing the selection is bothering you while you're trying to paint, you can hide a selection. It doesn't actually deselect it. You can hide a selection by using Control H. Um, it's found again. I'm not really big on my menus here, so it's found under I think uh, select maybe. I don't know where it's under. I don't mean honestly. I don't know. I think it's under view. It's under view, hide hide selections. Again, Control H is the quick key for it. Um, it hides your selection. It's still selected. There's still a selection there. You don't have to worry about you know you know painting outside the thing. Just real quick, you can see it's still selected. I do. Um, it's just Control H hides the selection. That's all. So you can come in here now and not worry about that. So that looks pretty good to me. Um, you know, for at least you know a starting shadow. I'm gonna go ahead and deselect now, even though you can't see it. Control D for deselect, and that's a useful tip. If you're ever having a hard time with nothing working, one of the most common things is sometimes you might accidentally have something selected and not know it. Um, even if you don't, you don't hide the selection. Sometimes you accidentally select like a few pixels of something and you can't see it. Um, so Control D is like the very first stock uh, uh, point that I recommend that you know oh, I, something's not working. Control D. Um, then after that, I double check to make sure I'm on the right layer. Okay, so this box or cube here, um, same same thing. It's going to be have a sharp edge, and it's going to be the darkest right around the, the, the base. This this is this is very CG sharp looking as I mentioned before. Uh, we can use the same things we talked about in the in the in the uh, sphere exercise. Come in here with the blur tool um, and just blur the, these up a little bit, maybe so they don't look so CG-esque. Or you can use the smudge tool. Um, for sake of time, I'm just going to go ahead and just use the blur tool real quick here. Just to give it a little bit, just to kind of remind you that it's there. Um, and then what I'm going to do, that was an example there. Move this off to the side here. And I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup because, yeah, that's definitely not good there. So what I could do... Is I don't have to necessarily do anything other than mess with my mask. So maybe I'll come in with my marquee tool. Oops, let me rephrase that. My uh, rectangular marquee tool. So again, that's the M key. Just to call back to earlier. 
I'm currently on I'm currently on the circular one. So if I want to go to the rectangular marquee tool, which is a sub tool, shift M. And you can see there it goes. It switched to the rectangular marquee tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw a box here because it's a little weird right there. Delete the I don't have to delete the only thing I have to delete is the mask. Or in this case I may, I have to delete a little bit of my shadow too. So again, this technique might be harder for some of you. Um, if that's fine, if you want to you want to merge more layers, you can do that. It's just you lose the the, the luxury of na of non-destructive editing. At some point, when in all paintings, you basically say, "Okay, I need to merge these." And again, remember to merge things as you select the layers in question and hit Control E, and it will merge those layers. I'm just going to put this in a group because I'm going to continue this lecture um, and keep these shapes in case I need them. So I'm going to hit Control G with this. I'm going to double click on the word group here and rename this to cube. So I now have a cube shape and it needs maybe a little bit more painting but overall all the the um, the the, lux uh, the lecture content where, where how the gradients mask around this uh, wrap around the shape are, are there. So everything is in place. We can push and pull the contrast more, make it a little bit more uh, shiny if we want and things like that but yeah I mean it, it's there it looks uh, it's going all right um, got a shadow everything's going good it, uh, technically the shadow is probably in a different direction this I should have had the shadow kind of going more horizontally but you know you know like I said we're going to be doing these from all different light sources as, as, anyway so this is fine so hopefully you enjoyed that uh, next time we'll continue we'll probably move on to things such as the cone or the cylinder which are actually simpler than the cube so that should be easy so if you can tackle the cube with perspective, you can handle the next ones coming up with no problem. So until then, um, keep painting, and hopefully you enjoyed that.